Hi guys, I made some preparation here. Um, I laid everything out already because we want to do some food prep and we will make some chicken alfredo bake, some pizza dough with Blumenkohl, which is cauliflower in English, it's German obviously. Um, Hackpfanne is also German, obviously. it's in the end just a minced meat with, um, you can use cabbage. Uh, I have Brussels sprouts today and some mushrooms. And if we have some time, we will make a dessert. This is the recipe for the chicken alfredo bake. I already tested it once and it's super yummy. The things we need are broth, which I made myself, chicken, butter, um, basil, Italian seasoning, broccoli. I have Parmesan and I have cheddar. The recipe calls for um, pepper jack cheese, but I don't think I can get that here. Minced garlic with a little bit of oil on top so it doesn't go bad. Um, I have an onion. The recipe doesn't ask for the onion, but I think it might be nice and gives a little more taste. Cream cheese, um, double cream and some mozzarella. This is a huge pack. We obviously don't need all of it. So now we start with the preparation of, of everything. Um, I have to say I never really follow a recipe. I just do whatever I think is right, so don't judge me if I do it a little bit different. Um, if you don't like broccoli, use something else or whatever, so it's your kitchen, you can do whatever you want. So I'm going to prepare everything now and you will see it a lot quicker than what it really is. <laughs> This is what we're going to use and this is what I cut off. I will put this first in the skillet now or in the pan and cook it for the dog. Um, that way the dog has a little treat tonight and I don't have to waste the part of the chicken that I don't want to eat myself. So let's get the pot on here. This is a super heavy pot from uh, KitchenAid, this one is, but you can use anything. You can also use a normal pan or something. But I like this one because I can also put it in the oven then later to um, bake the cheese on top. So that's why I love this one. We get one tablespoon of butter in there. If it's a bit more, a bit less, it doesn't really matter. Just, yeah. Whatever you feel like. While the butter is melting, I will start to cut the broccoli. What I like to do with the stem is now peel off this part. So I'll go and get a little knife, peel off the parts that are not so green and fresh and the rest you can just chop up and use just the way you would use the little hats. So, no waste here. So I will first put in the chicken for my dog. There's nothing wrong with this chicken and it gives a little more flavor even. I will put a little bit of water in here now and then I will place a plate on top of it and steam the broccoli that way in the microwave. So I will let that go on high for like six minutes and then we see what's happening. <laughs> maybe it works, maybe not. All right, so that's out. We have a little bit of flavor in there now from that chicken. I just put a little more butter chicken on top. And then some seasoning, salt, and pepper. You can also use um, fresh pepper, but I use that one. It's much easier. Give it a mix. So now you have to cook it just till it's not pink anymore. And the 
then comes the next step. So I guess I see you in a bit <laughs> when the chicken is done. So the chicken starts to look mostly white, still a little bit pink here. So we will cook it a little more. Um, while this is finishing up, I will cut up the onion. Uh, I think the broccoli is done. So let's have a look at that worked out. Looks good. Can you see the steam? Ooh. So that worked. Ta-da! So I just put it in this drainer thingy um, so that we don't put that much liquid in the sauce later. So this can just drip off and the chicken loses so much liquid. Can you see this? Ugh. Uh, that's weird. We would just cook it down and then it becomes flavor. So that's good. <laughs> I cut the onion now quickly. So are you guys people who cry when they cut onions or not really? Because I do every time. Like I said, the recipe doesn't really call for an onion, but I just like the flavor and the taste. So I like it. So I will do it in my kitchen. <laughs> if you don't like the onion or whatever, just swap it out or leave it out or do whatever you like. So the chicken say, maybe I have to just heat it up a little more. I think the recipe calls for medium heat, but it takes forever to do this on medium heat. And I'm not very patient. Come on chicken, get ready. I think I have to turn on the oh, thingy here. So that might be a little loud, I'm sorry. So the broccoli took now about, I think eight minutes on high in the microwave um, it still has quite a crunch but i like that because later it goes in with the chicken and the sauce and in the oven and everything so it will get cooked a little more if you like your broccoli much much softer then just leave it in a little longer in the microwave i think the chicken is good so I'll try to get that out now and because we have to put the broccoli and the chicken in the sauce later together I will just put the chicken with the broccoli now okay I'm not sure if it's normal that there's this much liquid coming out of the chicken I think that's very weird probably if you have a nice organic chicken it will have less less um, water in it if you can afford it always go for the um, Organic chicken, I would love to do that all the time, but I just can't. So I do it as often as possible, but it's not always possible. <laughs> Normally you have to put the broth in now to scrape off the dark bits on the pot, but because there is so much liquid, there are no dark spots on the pot. So I don't know if we really need the stock. I don't think so. So let's just skip that and add in the minced garlic. How much do we need for that? Three cloves of minced garlic. So I have no idea, of course, how much a clove is now that it's minced already. So let's just tag like one big one and one small one, another medium one. <laughs> just do as much as you like. You know, it doesn't really matter. Oh, and I will put my onions in there with that now as well, just to cook them and saute them. I think the other butter needs to go in there as well now. So normally it's two more tablespoons of butter now, so I just take a big chunk. I mean, we go keto here, right? So we need a lot of butter, we need a lot of fats. <laughs> I know, I know, coconut fat or something would be better, but let's face it, butter is just yummy. <laughs> so let's saute that for like two minutes or something until everything is cooked. Oh, you wanna cry, oh, this onion is bad. One ounce, how much is one ounce? Do you know that? I don't know that. I think the last time I did this, it was, I checked it and it was like 28 grams or something like that. I might be completely wrong, but who cares? So I will just put a, you know, piece in there as soon as the onions are done, obviously. So how about that much? That much? That looks good. So we will put that in as soon as this 
liquid goes away and as soon as the onions are done can you see this mm -hmm. yeah it smells so garlicky <laughs> I think that's the secret about this recipe. The garlic is just super nice. What do you think? We're done? I think we're done. So here's our chunk of cream cheese. And then we need cream. Heavy cream. So this is a pot of 200 grams. And I put this into my cup measurer. This thing. Um, you see, one cup. And it also says on here, one cup it's like 236 whatever milliliters this is 200 milliliters so that's good i'm not going to open another box of these just to have 30 more milliliters so in we go and then you take a whisk and whisk it in and you see those brown bits here you will whisk that up now with the cream and it will give lots of flavor just make sure it's not black that wouldn't be good <laughs> now i will put it on medium heat and we just have to cook in the cream a little I have so much chicken so i think i will add a little bit milk or something just to make it a little more salt so let's tidy up with this quickly and we've got italian seasoning i have viberg italian seasoning I think that's a brand that is used in restaurants here in Germany. So it's really nice. It even has pine nuts in it and stuff. I will show you. You see? It has these little nuts and all of the other things. <laughs> whatever is in it, Italian seasoning. You can use whatever you have. I mean, if you have another one, you know, use that. How much do we need anyway? Uh, oh, half a teaspoon. Yeah, that was a bit more, but I like the taste, so I will put even more. Adapt the taste to what you like, not what the recipe says. Or cook the recipe once and then see what you would change or whatever. And write it on the paper, that way you know the next time what you changed. I think we need the cheese. Yes. So, we need Parmesan. These bags are so cool. They have this little seal thingy and you can vacuum these and you can reuse them so that way you don't have to throw away the bag all the time you just you know open it get our the cheese or whatever you have in here and then you pop the cheese back in and it's perfect so i need parmesan two-thirds of a cup right like anyone would know how much that is what do you think this is a cup is that three quarters of a cup i guess it's more right but more is more especially with parmesan so just let's give it a little bit more so this is the parmesan i will seal that in a minute <clears throat> and then i have the cheddar this is a white cheddar i don't think there's a big difference in taste because the other one just has color in it um let's just do this quickly before it burns Turn it down a little more. So, how much do we need of that? Uh, so, this is supposed to be a pepper jack cheese. I must say, I don't know what a pepper jack cheese is. I googled it, and I think it's a cheese that has jalapenos in it. So, it's a bit spicy. I might be wrong. Please tell me what it is. <laughs> but I just take the cheddar so we have more cheese. And if you want, you could add jalapenos to this or some cayenne pepper or whatever. I think that would be really, really tasty. Maybe I try that. But because I make such a big batch, maybe I just put it afterwards in one of the batches and see how it tastes. Anyway, I'm sure you can do it and I'm sure it will be super yummy as well. Because why wouldn't it? Can you see that the bottom of the pan is nearly white again? So all the nice flavor of the cooking is now in the sauce, which is really yummy. Oh, I forgot to preheat the oven. Oh, I will do that quickly. I'm not sure what it calls for. I have no idea. I don't find it on the recipe as well. So I put my oven now on 
220, 220 degrees Celsius. So because it's thickened now, I will put all the cheese in here. Now you just incorporate it in the sauce. So that doesn't take long. It just needs to melt quickly. And trust me, this is so delicious. I would give it a taste now. I just need a spoon. That way you can change it if you, you know, need a little more salt or pepper or you want it spicy or whatever. I'm sure you could also use like sriracha sauce to spice it up. Mm. It's definitely salty enough. So be careful with the salt because the Parmesan is very salty and we salted the chicken first. Could use a little more pepper for my taste. So I will do that. Yeah. That way it gives a little more zing to it. And I also think I'm gonna put in some cayenne. I really like cayenne. If you don't like spicy food or you don't like it spicy at all, don't do this. Is it cayenne? Yeah, cayenne pepper. But I like it, so I will put in a bit. And that's it. So now you just put in the chicken and the broccoli. And look, that's why we put it in the drainer. Can you see that? Yeah, because there is so much water still on the broccoli and also, of course, some of the juices from the chicken. And so we don't get the sauce very thin now. You just better put it in this thing. Just mix it up, make sure that also the broccoli um, has sauce everywhere. It's quite a shitty ratio. I have much too much chicken in here. Uh, yeah, we need our protein, right? And it will make easily four. Yeah, I, I guess it will easily make four servings, which is great. So now just put it, push it flat a little bit so that it's like evenly everywhere. And then it's three quarters of a cup of mozzarella cheese. So how much is three quarters of a cup? I have no idea. I just put as much as I want so that it's nicely covered okay don't judge me you can follow the recipe and you know be a good girl good boy whatever <laughs> but i don't like that and there we go that's it you can put some basil on it now like the fresh basil i will wait with that until it's baked and then put some fresh basil on it maybe i won't maybe i will just do that on one portion which i will eat more or less now or like the next couple of days because the ones I'm freezing I'm not sure how the bezel will hold up so yeah let's just put it in the oven like this and then it comes out gorgeous I will quickly tidy this up a little bit and then we go to minced meat and um, Brussels sprouts dish <laughs> it's really really yummy it doesn't have the most interesting name but it's really really yummy Okay, so ready for round two. <laughs> um, I have the recipe here in my book, but it's in German, so I will obviously give you a recipe in English. Uh, that's ground beef, that's like 500 grams. And then I have the Brussels sprouts, which I have to clean, yay. Um, it's also 500 grams, I think. Then I have the mushrooms, I have no idea how much that is, but you can see it's just like, you know, a handful, just a few. Um, we will need some cheese, so I will use up this um, cheddar, which I used in the other dish as well Because it's a little watery already and yeah, not so yummy If I need a little more, I will use some more mozzarella, but I'm not sure about that and We will need an onion, cayenne pepper, cream, uh, garlic again And I still have those, oops, those leeks pre-cut so i will use them up as well just to get rid of them um and i'm sure they will be very yummy in, in the dish and then i wanted to show you with parmesan cheese how this thing works it's so cool we have these baggies we may have to make sure that it's really really closed here and then you just have this little thing and you put it on i hope i get it right now and then you place it on and normally it should suck out the air so this is so cool because that way your cheese lasts such a long, long time. It's And it's not just for cheese. I bought a steak the other day. If you would have the minced meat and you would use it not straight up, you could use it for that. So that's really, really nice. If you cook a lot and you do a lot of fresh, think about it. I will link it down below because it's really, really cool. I, I love it. 
I just really love it because it keeps everything fresh forever. I will just start the prepping now. Talk to you when I have my Maison Plus ready. <laughs> so let's do it. I just chop these in halves now, like here, like you can see here, like just halves or if they are really tiny, just leave them how they are. If you don't want to do this, if this is like too much work, because trust me, this took me like, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes, uh, 10 I guess. Anyway, um, I really, really like the fresh Brussels sprouts, so I do it, especially because I'm the only one who's eating it anyway, so then I do it for me. <laughs> If the boys would eat um, the Brussels sprouts, I probably wouldn't do it. Not often, at least. <laughs> just too much work. Anyway, I'm sure you can just use frozen Brussels sprouts if you still like, if you like the Brussels sprouts um, at all. It's just that they are not that crunchy then because they get a little soggy. But the taste will be just fine, I'm sure. Um, what you also could do, the last time I, I made it, I made it with white cabbage. So that one obviously is much, much easier to just cut down. What you also could do is uh, use some spinach. So yeah, the opportunities are kind of endless here. Just use whatever veggie you like. It's a nice wintry or autumn meal. Um, yeah, if you want to make it more summery or, or spring or whatever, use some peas. That, that you, you can use the frozen peas, that would take no time at all. Um, use some carrots, whatever. So now I'll we'll clean these guys. I don't think I have to brush them, just don't wash them. That's very important. Um, never wash mushrooms because then they get super soggy and yeah, they're not nice anymore. I always just cut off the little thingy here on the end because it dries out, so I don't like that too much. And then I have a look, if there is not really dirt on them, just cut them, you know, and put them wherever you put your mise en place. biggest pan here now. Um, I'm just heating it up full power. This is um, cheddar cheese and I have no idea how much that is. <laughs> it looks like a cup maybe, maybe a little less. Um, the garlic, the leeks just because they have to go. Um, I have some time, I think I will cut off a little bit more later. The cream, cayenne pepper and of course normal salt and pepper and the ground beef. So I think we're good to go. Let me put a little bit of, this is just coconut oil. Just use butter for the other one because it calls for it. And if it calls for it, the, then I tend to use a little too much maybe. But who cares? Oops. You can see the coconut oil is already melting quite good. So I guess the pan is nearly hot. So first we put in the ground beef. This is ground beef, but you can also use whatever, chicken, turkey mixed, like uh, pork and beef mixed. I prefer just beef, but yeah, whatever. This is 500 grams of beef. Um, it's quite a lot, but I want to make a few um, portions. That way I can freeze some and I always have a healthy meal on hand then. Because with keto, you know, you always need to cook and you need to cook and you need to cook and I love to cook, but sometimes it's just annoying. And if you, I don't know, have to go somewhere quickly, I mean, not that we go anywhere at the moment, but <laughs> maybe one day we will go somewhere again. And then you just need something on the go or just quick lunch to take with you to eat at work or wherever. This is a great thing because you can just freeze it and, you know, take it out in the morning and then Reheat it in the microwave for something at work. I will also put the onions in there. And I will already season the meat, of course. With some salt. 
and pepper. And shall we do a little cayenne pepper for the zing? Let's do it. Oops. Did you see that? I'm a master chef. <laughs> oh, I just had to show you guys that I'm, yeah, so talented in the kitchen. <laughs> I will put the Brussels sprouts in there as well because they need a little longer, of course, than the mushrooms. So, because this will need quite a while now to cook through. Um, oh, shit, the leeks. Oh, sorry. Well, that's, I was not supposed to say that, but anyway. So, let's put that in. They can cook up with the rest. Oh, and the garlic. I forgot the garlic. <laughs> If you're a little better in the kitchen than me, then you probably don't forget to add half the ingredients. But I'm a little chaotic and maybe that's the problem with not following a recipe that you forget half of it. But who cares? I just put it in now. So how much shall we take? Uh, two cloves? Maybe three? That should be right. And just mix it in there. It will cook. I mean, it's all diced up. It's super small. Not sure if this skillet is, or this uh, pan is big enough. <laughs> it has to be because I don't have a bigger one. All right, so let's just leave that for a minute. And, oh, did you see my glove? I burned it. Great, huh? But it still works, so. Oh, let's see. Oh my gosh. I mean, you have to get closer for that. Doesn't that look pretty and super yummy? Mmm. I will put some pepper on there. Uh, some fresh pepper this time. And then I will have a taste in a minute. So I got you close to get a little taste. Let's see where we can get something. Over here. Yeah, you see the broccoli is super soft. Also the chicken is super nice and soft. Oh, looks so yummy. Wait, I put you back. <laughs> obviously super hot but okay the sun just came in <laughs> and interrupted me while I was uh, fighting the super hot chicken but it was oh it's so yummy it is so so good it's very cheesy of course and um, it has so much flavor from the garlic and the cheeses and, and everything it's really 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 good um, I nearly burnt my mouth, but that was worth it because it was so good. So I will just put it aside now. And now we still have to cook this up because they are still rock hard. But we can put the mushrooms in there and cook them with the rest. You can cook everything separately, like first cook the meat, take it out, then, you know, cook the onions and the garlic and the leeks, if you don't forget. <laughs> Um, with the mushrooms, Brussels sprouts or whatever, you know, you can cook everything separately and then dump it together in the end. But that's not really my type of cooking. I, to take out the chicken for the other recipe was a hassle enough. So I'm just not that type of person. I dump everything together and it has to work and that's it. Now let's uh, put some thyme in here. But if you don't, you know, if you don't fancy picking up those little tiny leaves from the thyme, um, you can use the dried thyme. You, know. you can also use rosemary or really anything you like. I'm just not a big fan of rosemary, so I don't use it much. But if you like it, I'm sure it's, it would be nice. Just put whatever you like in. To make it easy on ourselves, a little bit of the dried thyme. <laughs> so this has to cook a little longer. Um, I will be back as soon as this is done. The Brussels sprouts are cooked now. Um, I just had a little taste and it tastes like nothing. So Pizza mix. I like this so much, I dump it into everything. So let's dump a little bit of this in there. It has oregano, a little bit of salt, paprika, uh, and pepper in it. And oregano. Did I say oregano? I think so. So this is really nice for everything that, I don't know, I like it, so I got it. 
you know, like oregano or something like that, then just don't. So I will put in a little bit of the stock. And then mix it up. So let's give it another try, just to see if it has enough spices now. Mm. Okay. Huh. It definitely has more taste now. I still think we could go a little heavier on the time, but you know, guys, that's just me. You do you. You do whatever you feel like. Oh, ooh, now comes the zinc. Ooh. But you can't forget that we add the cream and the cheese so they will take a lot of flavor away again so it has to have a lot of flavor in the beginning so let's put the cream in there so this is also a whole pot um, nearly a cup or 200 grams it says in grams here and then we throw in the cheese just let the cheese melt um, i put a little more cheese in there because I thought the cheddar was not quite enough and then just cook it down until it's not watery anymore you know you can have a sauce but it shouldn't be like a soup and then you're done give it a taste and see if you need anything else salt pepper cayenne or whatever you like you know put in whatever you want I'm sure everything's great in this this is just an amazing basic recipe it's just delicious every time it doesn't matter what you put in there i already did it now with just white cabbage i did it now with pak choy and brussels sprouts and this time with the brussels sprouts the leeks and the mushrooms it's really 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 good give it a taste look at the bubbles it's so cute anyway give it a taste it's amazing we're done rosie come here rosie come we will give her the chicken. Oh, good girl. Oh, good girl. Yeah, she like that, huh? Come. Oh, fine. Oh, she's so happy. And we didn't waste the chicken, so that was good. <laughs> I'm just editing the video and I saw that it's far, far too long. So I will end here. Hope you like the chicken bake and the um, Hackpfanne. <laughs> so um, I'm sitting here with my lovely Sunday robe and I'm nice and cuddled up. And I will give you the next two recipes then in another video. Bye. XOXO.